Hello, everyone, and welcome to At Barron's. I'm Andy Serwer, and welcome to our guest, Glenn Fogel, CEO of Booking Holdings. Glenn, nice to see you. Well, thanks for having me, Andy. So let's start off by you giving us a thumbnail of Booking Holdings. It's the old Priceline company, and it has that brand and other brands as well. Yeah, well, thumbnail, that's going to be hard. We're a big company now. We started out, you're correct, Priceline.com way back in the internet days. We're a very different company now. Uh, the biggest subsidiary we have is called Booking.com. And booking is by far the biggest, about 90% approximately of the total business now. But we have a lot of other brands. And people in the U.S. may not know Booking.com nearly as well as they know Priceline and Kayak and Open Table. Those are more well-known in the U.S. And then if you're in Asia, you may hear of Agoda, which is also very well-known, and then a whole bunch of other brands, too. It, it, the nature, though, they all go together in one thing, travel, hospitality, and open table, restaurants. One of my favorite things to say is, say, well, restaurants, why? I say, you know, if you're traveling, you're not eating at home. So it fits in. Yeah, a lot of history here and a really interesting business as well with your competitors and Travelocity and Expedia and IAC and Microsoft and then your own company with Jay Walker and, you know, William Shatner. I mean, it's kind of a wild and woolly business. What about the competitive set? Can you sort of talk to us about that? And I want to get into your company, of course, mostly, but just give us the general lay of the land. Look, we are, we are a two-sided oh, two marketplace. We are making it easier for people to travel. So we have travelers on one side. We have partners who are the suppliers, the hotels, the airlines on the other side. And we are creating an environment that makes it easier for both of them. We're providing value to both of them. So a traveler coming on, they can get the best prices. They can get what they want, what they need, greatest selection, ease of use. If something goes wrong, great customer service. On the partner side, you have hoteliers, you have airlines, you have car rental companies, you have attractions, et cetera. They need demand. They need the travelers to come to them. Now, of course, they'd like a lot of those people, as many people as they can, to come to their places directly, but they know they're not going to get everybody. So we work together that we can get them that incremental demand. And the great thing for us to do this is that the, when you look at the operating models of these travel companies, they have high, high leverage in their operations, meaning they've got a lot of fixed costs. So when you get that last bit of a customer, a lot of that revenue is going to go to the bottom line. Example, an airline, okay? Airline, those last few seats, well, they've paid for all the fixed costs, the lease for the plane, the pilots, the fuel, all that stuff, that was a fixed cost. Now you get a couple more customers come on board, that revenue from those customers has to go straight to the bottom line. So the airline, if they want to fill up that plane, we can help provide that incremental demand. They'll help them. Same thing for a hotel, same thing for a restaurant. Empty restaurant table at night goes empty, zero revenue. Fill that uh, table, and a lot of that revenue is going to go to the bottom line. All right, but just to follow up a little bit, Glenn, why are there so many brands out there, and will there be more consolidation? I mean, it's different from other internet-based businesses that way. Well, we, we really try and have each of our companies is really oriented to doing something differently. So Booking.com, the largest one by far, it's global. And it was primarily hotels only where we started it at. It wasn't doing anything else. Now we're doing other things soon. Now we have a very fast growing airline, air travel business in that company. We never had that before. If you looked at Priceline though, Priceline was US only, really US only. But it was doing all the different things, hotels, airlines, car rental, and all that. And Agoda, Agoda is very focused on Asia. So we really have a differentiating theory of which one should do what where, and that's really helped us a great deal. That's why we are by far the largest travel company in the world. Now, I want to talk about booking.com uh, a little bit, and you mentioned the European presence and the fact that it's much more hotel rooms than rental cars or airline tickets. So what is the origin of that business, and why is it so uh, prominent in Europe? Well, it started in Europe, started in the Netherlands. Uh, some entrepreneurs in the 90s came up with it. And they built it up. And they had a model that was very different than the way a lot of other people were doing the hotel booking uh, business. They were willing to not take money up front. They were providing the technology that somebody could get a reservation, but they didn't take the money. Basically, you paid the hotel when you showed up. You paid the hotel, and then Booking.com then had to get a commission from the hotel after the stay. 
very different than the way everybody else in the business was doing it for the most part. And that helped them build very rapidly because the suppliers loved it in the sense that, okay, wait a minute, I don't have to wait for booking.com to pay me. I'll get the money when the person actually stays. That's great. So that they were able to build up that uh, supply very, very fast. And that helped build it. And that the reason they started there is because they were born and bred in Europe. But one of the things is they started in the Netherlands where they come up from. And that was a very small country. Um, you know, not a lot of people. And if you want to develop a big business, you got to go outside right. the borders. And so then they went throughout Europe and then they started going global. And that's a little different. People in the U.S., a lot of people in the U.S., because we have such a big market in the U.S., people don't always necessarily think about expanding beyond our borders. And that actually is detrimental to the development of U.S. companies because people don't naturally begin to think internationally, whereas when you start a company in the Netherlands, you're instantly thinking international from day one. Right. right. I want to ask you about the business now, Glenn, in terms of the economy. And obviously, it's been an extremely unusual period over the past three years or so because of the pandemic. So you had travel basically stopped, then it picked up, then we had revenge travel. Yep. Where are we right now? What does 2024 look like? Well, look, we just did our uh, earnings announcements the last quarter. The summer period was just fantastic, hitting record numbers, really pleased with that, and far above some of the numbers we had in 2019. So that's a real positive sign that we're past the pandemic globally. But there's still areas where things have not totally caught back. So Asia, for example, still behind 2019 in some of the metrics in some countries in Asia, still further behind, particularly in international travel. So China, for example, the outbound business there is still nowhere near where it was in 2019. So that's a tailwind for people like us who are in the travel industry. So we see that as a positive going forward. At the same time, we read more and more about much people want to experience things as opposed to buying things. And we see that shift continuing to happen. I think it's going to continue further on. Look, I always look not just, don't look just a year ahead. We always think long term. And the fact is travel is an industry that has just incredible long term growth, not potential, but absolute will happen. 100 years, people have wanted to travel more and more. As you get wealthier, you want to travel more. If you enter the middle class, one of the first things you want to do is travel somewhere else. This is something that's going to continue for as long as I can, I can imagine. I don't see that stopping. So this is something that we are able to benefit from. But what about sort of the deglobalization trends and some of the global tensions like in the Middle East, like in Ukraine? Aren't you concerned about those things? Look, it's always, it's terrible when time there's any type of conflict. Absolutely horrible. And, it, it, and yes, it hurts business, but it's a minor thing compared to what happens to people in some of these events, and it's tragic. That being said, we're talking our businesses, there are always bad things happening throughout the world. Conflict, yes. Pandemics, yes. Tsunamis, how to deal with that one. Volcano went off in Iceland, and we had to deal with the whole shutdown there. Terrorism, I was part, I was at Priceline when the tragedy of those planes going to the World Trade Center and the Pentagon and the disaster that, and what happened to air travel then. I've been through a lot. I've been at this company now almost 24 years. There are always going to be bad things happening that are going to hurt the business. In the long run, though, we're still going to see an upward turn. And you mentioned you know, geopolitical tensions and things like that. I was a student in, in the early 80s. I was traveling to Russia. Ronald Reagan was president talking about the evil empire. The Cold War was full on. I traveled, to, I studied in Russia. Hmm. And then in, in, in the mid 80s, I was studying in China. I went to China. Believe me, yes, there's lots of bad things happening in the world, but that does not stop the desire of people to continue to travel. I want to ask about the mechanics of the site in two facets. One, the algorithms. Hmm. Sometimes people are, are amazed by them, think they're wonderful. Sometimes people get frustrated. Mm -hmm. How have the algorithms developed, part one, and part two, what does the promise of AI yeah. bring to the table? So continual improvement, that's the basic theme. So when the business first started out, and I would go on, and I would look for something, somewhere to go or something, and something comes up that is so far away from anything I would do, it's like, how could, I mean, don't they know where I live? Why am I seeing an offer that I can never ever use? Why is that being shown to me? 
You want to do something that is personalized, personalized so much so that it's just like it was in the old days when there was a human being travel agent who knew you, who knew you so well. They knew what you liked. They knew what you could afford. And they would present you a few options that would pretty much be, and then you would go back and you'd whittle it down. You'd go back and forth, back and forth. And eventually, then you get the trip and you go and you make one payment. And if anything goes wrong, you would just call her and she would fix it. It was all wonderful, right? We want to use technology to recreate that, only be better. Because the technology can do much better than any human being could ever do. Instead of her looking at brochures and going through big books about all sorts of things, it's all in the database. And it can never forget anything about you. These things are really going to come forward. We are doing it now. Now, when somebody goes onto our site, we are personalizing things. So it is a much better match with what they may want to do. And I believe with AI, what's going forward is going to be even better. What I want is not just that it absolutely understands me, it's producing all the things that are going to fit what I need and what I want. I want it to take the next step and do it before I even think of it. I want it to be rem reminding me that, oh, by the way, Glenn, shh, we think it's about time that you start doing your planning for Christmas. I want that coming to me in July and August. Not me in, in November. I don't remember what I'm supposed to do. But can you get serendipity? Like you've never gone to the Pacific. Sure. But, you know, I'm just going to throw Fiji out to you. And you're like, right. wow, what a great idea. Right. But that doesn't mean that you, you, because you never went to Fiji that therefore you'll never be shown Fiji. Right. No. The fact is, oh, you have been going to, let's say, Caribbean vacations right. and you like the beach. And you seem to like to go internationally because you've made one international trip. Then we will throw it. And by the way, you don't have to throw everything. You can throw in some things that are far out just to see what would happen and learn from the person. Right, right, right. And and how's Open Table doing? I mean, that's an interesting business. I happen to use that a lot. Yeah, no, a lot of people use it. A lot of people love it. It provides a great service. It's doing very well right now. Uh, it's a very small part of the overall numbers for you know our income statement. But it's important in terms of brand, and it's important in terms of making people aware. And I see the reason we bought it was because, as I started out talking about how when you travel, you're not eating at home. So it wouldn't be wonderful to match up, and I always give this example. Let's say you take someone who is traveling to London. Let's say they are going to, let's say they're a luxury traveler, and they're staying in Mayfair, very expensive hotels there, right? Well, the restaurants are also pretty expensive there. They don't know there's some transient, it's called transient traveler, transient because you're, you're just traveling through, is coming from America and is staying in a hotel in Mayfair. That hotelier would love to be able to get that traveler to come to their specific restaurant. We know that customer is in that hotel in Mayfair. We know because Open Table working with the restaurants in Mayfair, we can create a way to provide opportunities for the restaurateurs to provide offers, discounts, special things that would attract that customer who is now staying in the hotel in Mayfair. Combining those things will provide a great thing. Again, I started with that incremental right. demand to the restaurateur and providing great value to the traveler who's, oh, because I booked this with booking.com, I'm getting this great offer through Open Table to get that restaurant reservation. That's how that works. Going back to some forward-looking um, pieces in your view of your business and your, your uh, view of that, I should say. I know you look far ahead, but what are your customers telling you right now about 2024? Well, uh, what we know is, and we talked about in our earnings call, how we look at our forward bookings. Mm -hmm. So we see how are we doing and we look at it. And we said in our earnings call how they were strong. And we love to see that because that says that there is demand. It's good to see that happening. It says people are enthusiastic about traveling more. Here's the thing on all of this is that Again, people are always looking at us like, well, what's going to happen next quarter? What's going to happen here and all that? I continue to try and press people, please think long term. Don't think short term. Mm -hmm. And that they're going to be, it travel's a volatile business. Sometimes it's going to be really strong. Sometimes it's not going to be as strong. But it's the long term trend that people should be focusing on. Your stock has been on a tear, Glenn. It's up, what, 55% year to date, which is three mm -hmm. times the market. Why is that? Again, you're thinking short term. You're looking a year, right? Well, I'm an investor. Looking, I don't have a problem a with that back. kind of look, short term. Look, I'll tell you look, that. Am I? I look back to the pre-pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. So we did our last earnings call and uh, our um, on our adjusted 
uh, numbers are non-GAAP EPS. Okay, $72.32, uh, up 60%, 6 0% for 2019. So we came through a pandemic and we provide EPS up 60%. That's a really great return. And that's, that's over a, you know, a full cycle of an incredible travel depression and back up. That's the thing that I think, I'm not gonna look like last year, I'm gonna look over a longer term. I look back, I was at this company when our stock, before we did the reverse split, which we had to do to maintain being listed in the early part of the beginning of the century, we had our stock was hovering on a dollar a share. Okay, we did a reverse split, got it up to $6 a share, right? It's now over 3,000, from six to 3,000. That's, That's the way to look Why at it. Why haven't you split the stock? What's it 3,000? Why should we split the stock? Well, Tell me the positive. Two, well, the positive, of course, is that some people think it's too expensive, small investors Wait, they can't think it's buy. too expensive because of a, because of a, of a, nominal, absolute basis, a nominal amount? Right, exactly, the nominal amount. And because of a nominal amount, right, they think exactly. it's too expensive. That's how they yeah. value a stock. Because some people, of, as you well know, some people do I don't think I want that. that kind of an investor. Oh, well, that's, you're saying like Warren Buffett, because well, Warren I'm Buffett's just, the same way. And that's okay. By the way, I'm not saying that we shouldn't, because what does matter is what do the shareholders want? Mm -hmm. And I would say we wouldn't, we wouldn't ever do it. Mm -hmm. Maybe we would. And by the way, there is an issue in terms of employee stock. When you are giving mm -hmm. people shares, there's an emotional feeling of you gave me only three shares yeah, right. or four shares yeah. or five shares. So you're talking the, emotional stuff, right? But there, and uh -huh. emotions do matter. So yeah. maybe someday we would do something like that. But but the idea we wouldn't do it because. I believe that there's some change in the value of the company. Okay. I would do it because of an employee when you're giving out equity to employees. And then you have a rounding issue too. The stock's in the thousands, you end up with a rounding issue and stuff. So oh. someday maybe, uh, I don't think that's where people should be focusing their thoughts on. I hear you. Okay, forgive me for being short term again. I know <laughs> the stock is up 55% year to date. Is there anything left? Why should I buy the stock or hold the stock going forward? The reason you should hold the stock the reason you should always hold the stock is because look at the track record. We came from nothing practically. And over the 20, almost 24 years I've been at this company, we have developed something that truly provides value, value to customers. And two kinds of customers here. As I say, we got the travelers and we got the partners. Those are our customers. And we have proven that we can continue to provide value to them by providing value to customers you will maintain a sustainable business advantage and you will continue to be able to have the fund security to make it better and better and better. I believe that what we are doing is a good thing. I believe in our mission. Our mission is to make it easier for everybody to experience the world. So I believe in what we're doing is good. We're making people better off. And by the way, about travel, you mentioned geopolitical issues, okay? You go back to Mark Twain, famous American author. He wrote a book, and this is in the 1800s. It's called Innocence Abroad. He wrote that mm -hmm. book after he had traveled to the Middle East of all places. And he was actually paid to go by the newspaper that hired him. So journalism, back then they used to pay journalists to actually travel. Mm -hmm. I know he, <laughs> back yeah, in the good, right. old, good yeah. old days, right? So he comes back and he says that travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness. I believe that's true. I believe by us improving travel, we are help, helping make society better off. So we have a good mission. Now, our job is to make it easier. That's what we're doing. And all the things we use, technology, AI, all the steps to make it easier for people to travel and provide more value, that is why people will continue to come back to us. More and more people come back to us. We get more customers. More customers come. We're able to do more things for our uh, both sides of the marketplace. That's why you should own the stock. It's a company that is increasing value, has proven increasing value over almost a quarter of a century, and we believe we're gonna do even more in the future. All right, final question, two-part question. One, Wharton undergraduate, Harvard Law School, right? Correct. Do you use any of that stuff for this job? I okay, number one. Right. And then part two, you've been at the company, you said so yourself, for almost 24 years. Yeah. How much longer are you gonna stay at this company? I mean, it's a long time to be at a place. Yeah, so um, in terms of the first question, everything you do in life helps you learn. And whether you were in school, uh, Wharton undergrad, and by the way, after I graduated, then I was an IT person, an IT professional before I went to law school. And I went to law school, came out, was an investment banker, ended up being a head trader for a guy named Barton Biggs, Morgan Stanley for a while, mm -hmm. did that. Then I came over to Priceline. I've done a lot of different things. Also, as a lifeguard, 
I was also, I've been a shorter cook. I've actually, I've been a, a 14 years old and a messenger. I've done so many different things, but every single thing we do helps us learn and do other things better. And sometimes you fail, but you learn from failure too. I've been fired. I was fired from a job. I know a little bit about that and what that means. I know a little bit about the right way to fire somebody if you have to and the way not to do it. So every single thing we do is going to help us do better in the future. That's to your first question. Your second question, how much longer am I going to do it? Uh, again, I don't plan out long term in terms of things like that. I certainly not going to discuss them. But I will say this. I love what I'm doing, really enjoying the recovery from what was a true tragedy, that pandemic. Glenn Fogel, CEO of BookingHoldings.com. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Andy. This is At Barron's. I'm Andy Serwer. We'll catch you next time.